फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी चेक इन विच इन डिटर्मिनेट फॉर्म द क्वेश्चन इज क्लियरली एज एन टेंस इन्फिनिटी दिस पार्ट टेंस टू इन्फिनिटी एंड इट इज वेरी इजी टू ऑब्जर्व दैट एज एन टेंस टू इन्फिनिटी दिस पार्ट टेंस टू माइनस वन दिस पार्ट ऑल्सो टेंस टू माइनस वन दिस पार्ट ऑल्सो टेंस टू माइनस वन एंड सिमिलरली दिस पार्ट ऑल्सो टेंस टू माइनस वन दैट इज आई कैन से दिस होल विल बी टेंडिंग टू माइनस एन हेंस प्रेजेंटली आई कैन से दिस क्वेश्चन इज इन द फॉर्म ऑफ इन्फिनिटी माइनस इन्फिनिटी एंड इन्फिनिटी माइनस इन्फिनिटी इज इन डिटर्मिनेट फॉर्म एंड यू मस्ट हैव सीन दैट इन द क्वेश्चन ऑफ सीज वी ऑलवेज ट्राई टू बिंग द क्वेश्चन इन द फॉर्म ऑफ सिग्मा आर इक्वल टू सम फाइनाइट नंबर इज हेयर एंड अपर पार्ट इज टेंडिंग टू इन्फिनिटी एंड हेयर एफ आर बाय एन एंड वन बाय एन वी ट्राई टू ब्रिंग एंड लिमिट एंड ट्रेंड टू इन्फिनिटी इज देयर एंड आफ्टर दिस यू मस्ट बी नोइंग दैट फॉर आर बाय एन वी राइट एक्स फॉर वन बाय एन वी राइट डी एक्स फॉर फाइंडिंग द लोअर लिमिट वी पुट द मिनिम वैल्यू ऑफ आर फॉर फाइंडिंग द अपर लिमिट we put the maximum value of r from here and then we proceed further but this is applicable only when all the terms are tending to zero here all the terms are not tending to zero therefore directly i can't use this formula first we try to bring the question in the proper standard form and as i had seen that each part was tending to minus 1 obviously to bring the question in this present standard form as i had seen that each term was tending to minus 1 and here n was there if i write fn as 16 plus 5n minus 3n square by 4n plus 3n square plus 1 and in similarly in last also i write plus 1 here this will come that is i have divided n into 1 1 1 n parts and added 1 to each part the benefit of doing this thing will be i'll get fn in the form of here after adding 3 n square will always get cancel and once 3n square get cancelled in the numerator always a linear expression will be there and in the denominator always a second degree expression will be there and therefore this whole part will be tending to zero after that and because the whole part will be tending to zero after that and then we will be able to use the proper standard method which i told you hence in the form of sigma if i want to write i will write fn equal to r is equal to 1 here you can see 4n 8n 12n and because 7n square can be written as 4n square plus 3n square and 4n square means 4n into n hence i can say this is the Another term that is general term will be four n into r plus three n square and numerator will be sixteen r because sixteen thirty two forty eight the general term will be sixteen r plus five n n minus three n and so on general term will be n into 5 plus r minus 1 into minus 4 bracket close minus 3n square and plus 1 
and r will vary from 1 to n this is equal to r is equal to 1 to n 16 r plus 5 n minus 4 n into r minus 1 minus 3 n square plus 4 n r plus 3 n square whole upon 4 n r plus 3 n square this is equal to 16 r plus 9 n upon 4 n r plus 3 n square and it is clear that as n tends to infinity this whole thing will be tending to 0 whatever the value of r from 1 to n hence the question has come in standard form now limit n tends to infinity fn will be equal to limit n tends to infinity sigma r is equal to 1 to n 16 r by n plus 9 upon 4 r by n plus 3 and 1 by n and after this you must be knowing that we get the sign of integration for r by n we write always x for 1 by n we always write dx we get 16x plus 9 upon 4x plus 3 dx r will vary from 0 to 1 because in this expression the minimal u of r will give you the lower limit the maximal u of r here will give you the upper limit for r equal to 1 lower limit will be for r equal to n upper limit will become 1 and this is equal to 0 to 1 4 plus minus 3 upon 4x plus 3 and dx this is equal to 4x minus 3 log 4x plus 3 upon 4 and lower limit 0 to 1 we get the answer 4 minus 3 by 4 log 7 minus 0 minus 3 log 3 by 4 that is I get 4 minus 3 by 4 log of 7 by 3 hence I can say C is the correct choice.